And uh, and so thank you again for joining us and and uh, we're gonna get started tonight. So Freddie. The title of the message tonight is goodness of God, the goodness of God. It's important to review uh, the goodness of God from time to time. Uh, years ago, I found out that God is good, that God is good, and that uh, he gives good things, and he gives only good things, and he will withhold no good thing from you. Mm -hmm. So those are real basic concepts. We need to know that God is good, and that he gives us good things, and he withholds no good thing from us. A lot of people get upset at God and frustrated with him because uh, they, they don't think he's doing exactly what they want him to do. They're, they're not controlling. It, it's pretty hard to control God. Uh, I mean, he's the God of the universe who created mm -hmm. the universe. But I want you to know that uh, he is good. And uh, it's important for us to, to remember this goodness and think about it. And so that the message tonight's a simple message. It's about his goodness. Uh, James chapter 117 says, uh, every good gift comes down from mm -hmm. God. Well, in reality, every good thing yes. uh, comes down from uh, God and uh, the father of lights in whom there is no variableness of changing. And mm -hmm. so it's coming from him goodness so we want to look at this goodness for a moment we really see uh, the goodness uh in exodus 33 when uh, moses said to god uh, show me your glory and god said i'm going to let all my goodness pass before you so mm -hmm. what is goodness then because moses asked for glory well glory is the express radiance and brilliance of the goodness of God. Ooh, our, mean... our God is so good. And, and when, uh, when God's goodness passed in front of Moses, he had to put Moses in a rock. Oh. He had to put his hand over him uh, because he would just be burned to a crisp. If, if you saw God, uh, the face of God, and you weren't prepared and, and you're your spirit wasn't ready for that. Uh, you could just be burned to a crisp. Not that he was bad, no, but it's all about his goodness. It's so brilliant. It's so amazing. Mm. Uh, and, and we need to be aware about this. And people get confused. And some people think uh, God brings evil. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. they, I've even heard them say he brings evil in order to accomplish good. But that is absolutely a lie. God is good. He gives he you good, good and he withholds no good thing from, from you. you. Now, the thing about goodness, uh, what is it? Well, we, we learn a little bit about it in Mark chapter 10, uh, when the rich young ruler uh, came running up to Jesus and he knelt before him. Uh, this is verses 17 and 18. He knelt before him and, and he called him good teacher. Uh, our good master, uh, and uh, you know, how, what must I do to have eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? There's none good but God. See, he, he was ignorant right mm -hmm. there. That, that, he was maybe as rich, and maybe as young, but maybe as a ruler, but he was ignorant of God's goodness. Mm -hmm. Now, in reality, the God of creation was standing there before him because Jesus is God. In Amen. the beginning was the word, word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and it was manifested in the flesh, and that's Jesus Christ. And so the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit is, God. is God. They're all God. Okay, so, but he said, um, good master or good teacher, and, and Jesus said, there's none good but God. And so what, what does it mean then? There's none good but God. Okay, so we have a, miscon a misconception about what goodness is. Uh, some people call, uh, they got a new car, they say, oh, it's really a good car, or uh, I've got uh, this relationship, I call it good, or I've got uh, this house, a good house, or whatever. People 
call people good. They call things good. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said there's none good, good but the Father. God, but God. Oh, hallelujah. So there, there's a, the term good is really uh, misunderstood when you think about what does it say in the Bible. There's only one good, and that is God. And what God does is good. Hallelujah. Okay, so what that, that's what he said in the beginning when he made heaven and earth and, and, and he made the seas and he made the animals and he said, it is good. It's good. Hallelujah. So there's only one person could, that, that could say those things were good uh, because it was God and he is good and what he does is good. So this is the definition of goodness uh, from the Bible. This is not uh, contemporary thinking, but it's from the Bible. The God's standard of good is God and the things that God does. So it's his life and his nature. Mm, hallelujah. And, and uh, mm, mm. people, uh, I know that in the eyes of man, the things that they do, uh, they think they're right. Okay, so everybody thinks they're right. They all think they're good. Uh, but let's just be real about it. Let's look at it from the biblical perspective. There is none good but God. Okay, and so there, all of the goodness passed before Moses, and Moses was changed. He was changed so mm -hmm. that the glory of God shone yes, upon his face. face. Now, so goodness and glory are bound together. They're linked together. It's important mm -hmm. for us to understand goodness, the goodness of God. Otherwise, we get confused about what is good and what is evil. A lot of people call evil good, good, and good, good evil. evil. We need to know the distinction here. And glory and goodness are linked together because glory is the expression, the, the radiant expression, the brilliance of the goodness of God and of of uh, God himself and of his presence. And we have to realize then, if we're going to think what is good, we have to think about God himself and what he does. Now, how can an individual then uh, relate to goodness? Well, because we become a vessel for his use. Oh, a vessel of the master's use. And, and we yield ourselves to him and then his nature uh, and mm. his existence and his person flow through us. Ooh. See, we've got to come to the end of ourselves. Mm. Galatians 2.20 said, uh, I've been crucified. Uh, nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. So when Christ lives in you, that's the goodness uh, that's within you. Uh, Paul oh. wrote out, there's no good thing dwelling in my, my flesh. flesh. It's not in your flesh, but it's in your spirit is where Christ is. And that's the goodness. And every good thing comes from God. And what God does is good. Don't get confused and, and say something like a hurricane, uh, that God brought mm -hmm. a hurricane to punish the people. But forget that. Forget all of that stuff. God is good. He only does, he does good, good things. things. He does good things, and he only does good things, and he does not withhold any good thing. And Romans uh, 8, 29 says, he works all things together for the, the good, good of those who love him and, and are called, called according, according to his, to his purpose. purpose. Now, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, now, I want to take this to a higher level, mm -hmm. and. Uh, there's this passage in, in uh, Ephesians 5 that's talking about light and uh, when you uh, that we've been in darkness and we've, we've come into the light and we produce the fruit of light. Mm, and then this mm, is mm. Ephesians 5, 9. And you know what the fruit of light is? It is goodness. goodness. Hallelujah. That's mm. the fruit of light. Okay, so I want to tell you this story that I heard. There was this uh, this atheist that, that he he said, I, I'm an atheist. I, I do not believe there is a God. 
I do not believe that God exists. I, I will not open a Bible, and I hate anything to deal that deals with religion, and I will not go to a church, okay? But he interacted with a man, and that man was a Christian, and that Christian exhibited goodness. He was good. He was radically good. He was always good. He was stably good. And one day, the man that was said that he was an atheist said, I know there is a God because I see this man is radically good. Mm, mm, radically mm, good. Mm, mm. And because of that goodness, it could only come from God. Oh, and even this atheist, even this atheist knew that the man was so good every day, every from the morning to the night, he yeah. was so good. Yeah. Consistent. And, and what he did, he was consistently good. That that it changed the atheist from being an atheist to a Christian. He accepted Christ because he knew that a man could be good like that man was good, consistently good, only because there was a God, God that did exist and he was manifesting the life and nature of God in his life. Mm. I, I think that ought to be a standard for all of us that we want to manifest the life of God through goodness. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the only thing that's going to convince this world mm. out there. That they've got to see some goodness. Uh, they've got to see it in your life. See, that man never preached the word to him. That's right. It wasn't about preaching the gospel. Oh, oh you say uh, souls are saved by the preaching of the gospel. Right. But this is about living your life as a light. And the fruit of the light is goodness. A living a, testimony. A living testimony. You are a city on a hill. hill. Hallelujah. You're a city on a hill. And there's a lot of light coming out of that. And, and that light will draw. It'll draw the people to Jesus Christ. If you are good. And how do we get to that position of being good. Mm. We have to come to the end of our self. We have to come to the end of our self and say, no longer is it me. But like Paul wrote, I am crucified, but it's Christ in me. Mm -hmm. as a, and then uh, well, Philippians 121, if we, if we live, it's Christ. Oh, so Jesus. it's Christ living through us. Yes, and yes, he, he's yes, God Lord. and he is good. And there is none good other than God. And so if we have to yield to, to him, yield to the Holy Spirit, yield our Hallelujah. vessels Hallelujah. as a vessel of honor and do good. We've, we've mm, got to do mm, good. Mm, now, mm. there are going to be some people who will persecute you. And you may say, well, I've got some enemies. But what are you supposed to do? The people to the people who persecute you and, and to your enemies. Well, uh, you know, Jesus, to bless said, them. You, Jesus said, love your enemies. Right. Bless those that curse you and do good. Hallelujah. All right. That's a pretty simple. Amen. It's a pretty simple uh, uh, description there of what we're supposed to do. That's the prescription for our life to love our enemies, bless those that curse, curse us, us, and do good. Woo, glory. Do good. Well, how are we going to do good? We've got to come to the end of ourselves and, and let Christ go forth. Okay, we cannot compromise. You, you cannot oh, say uh, good is evil, and you cannot say evil is good. You cannot compromise. There's a lot of compromise in this world today. A lot of compromise mm -hmm. uh, among people that call themselves Just Christians. Christians. There, we cannot, we cannot compromise. Uh, Psalm forty-five seven uh, said that I hate righteousness. Uh, I mean, I love righteousness and hate wickedness. Ooh, that, was a, that was a prophetic word of Jesus Christ. 
and his followers and his disciples. Mm -hmm. And that's who we are. We're his disciples. We're learning about him. And we have to love righteousness and hate wickedness. wickedness. Glory to God. So, so you can't put your foot in two worlds. That's right. You cannot be wishy-washy. Or straddle the or fence. Or straddle the fence. Uh, you've got to make a decision. Right is right and evil is, is evil. evil. And we're going to stand for what's right and we're going to stand against what is evil. Mm, hallelujah. Glory to God. Goodness. I'm talking about goodness tonight. I'm saying this is a this is a simple message, but we need to be to get hold of it that we cannot in ourselves do good. Uh, mm -hmm. Not in our flesh. Now, it, it says that all have sinned and come short of the glory. glory of God. But that also says, well, they've come short of the goodness because goodness and glory are tied together. And, and you come short of the glory when you don't do goodness. When you don't bring forth the fruit of goodness. Oh, good then, then you're falling good. short of the glory. It, wow. you've got to bring forth the fruit of mm, goodness now how are we going to overcome evil we mm, overcome mm, evil with good with good that's a, a revelation mm. uh, 12 21 we overcome Come evil with, with good. good a simple message here but mm. what is good see that's the critical thing it's easy to say, okay, we overcome evil with good, but what is good? Mm -hmm. There is none good but God. Hallelujah. And the only way I can do good is to come to the end of myself and yield myself to God to be a vessel of his use. And so my life uh, is Christ. And if I die, it's gain because I go on Amen. and I'm with Christ. But in this life, I have to live as Christ. I release Christ before, listen to this. Mm. Uh, it's Christ in you, the hope, hope of, of glory. glory, because Christ is good. And, and that's going to radiate out of you the goodness and the glory of God. Thank if you me. let Christ come forth in your life, there's going to be glory. Uh, glory shine Hallelujah. upon your face. Hallelujah. It, it, it shone upon Moses' face, Exodus 34. When he came off of, of that yeah, encounter Hallelujah. with God off of the mountain, his face was uh, shining with glory, and, and the people just couldn't stand in his presence. He and had they, to put a veil they over. They asked to put a veil over. But, but our eyes, we, we no longer have to put a veil over our eyes because we are born of the Spirit. Glory to Hallelujah. God. We're born of the Spirit. Now, I've heard a lot of people uh, say the glory of God is upon the face of Sherry, that mm -hmm. uh, they've seen the glory of God upon her. Do people see the glory of God on your face? Well, if you make that decision, you want to bring forth the glory of God. You want to bring forth the goodness of God. You want to release Christ in your life. That, that's what this message is about. Mm -hmm. How can we do this? How can we release uh, the, the goodness of God? And that will change people's lives. It'll change your life. Mm -hmm. See, the only way we're going to change is when we encounter the goodness of God. Uh, that's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Repentance. The goodness of God, God leads, leads to, to repentance. repentance. Uh, Romans 2.4. Uh, the goodness of God leads to repentance. Now, what is repentance? Well, it's a change in the way you think. It's a change in your action. Yes, a change yes. In your lifestyle. I mean, encountering goodness uh, is a life-changing experience. Hmm. When you experience the goodness of God, it will change your life. It has enough power within it Hallelujah. now not only that as, as you release the goodness I consistently release god's goodness i'm not talking about your goodness i'm talking about god's goodness through you uh, releasing the presence of the holy spirit releasing christ in your life it will change the people that you are around because it will empower people to change 
to live differently, to think differently. Mm. That's what goodness does. It has enough power within it to empower you because it's the very presence of God himself. Hallelujah. It, is, it will empower you to change. And when you encounter his goodness, uh, it's going to cause you to change. That, that's the thing about goodness and why we should even talk about it tonight, why we should consider it tonight, because it is powerful. It is life-changing, and it's life-changing in you, in your life, and if you let God operate through you, it will change the people around you as you live and release the goodness of God. Now, I'm not talking about your own Hallelujah. abilities, not even your intellect, not even your, your preaching mm -hmm. to them. I'm talking mm -hmm. about the goodness of God in your life and through your life. It is a fruit of the, of the light. Goodness is a fruit mm -hmm. of the light. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's a fruit of the Spirit, too. In uh, Galatians uh, 6, 22 and 23, it says, love, uh -huh. joy, peace. Uh, I'm sorry, love, uh, uh, Gen Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Uh, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, uh, goodness. Mm. Hallelujah. Right there it is, love, joy, peace, uh, long-suffering, uh, gentleness, goodness. It, it's right there. It's in the top of the fruit. It, it's not at the last. It's not at the bottom. Uh, the fruit mm. of goodness. goodness. Now, you know, self-control, we've talked about that before, that it's that power within you to say these negative things that are coming toward you, 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 you stop those and, and you let goodness come through. Uh -huh. all, you yeah. stop all of the negative things uh, coming through your uh, being and, and you release the goodness and let the goodness come through. You're like a, a traffic a uh, policeman at an intersection and, mm -hmm. and you've got all of these things bearing down on you and, and with self-control you'll stop the negative things because see we love righteousness and hate wickedness oh, so we've got to stop the wickedness uh, and wickedness can come in a lot of a lot of different ways it can come uh, in despair and depression and oppression, mm -hmm. all anxiety, of those, all of those different things. Uh, but we've got to stop those and let goodness flow through us. Hallelujah. Uh, grasp Lord, the good. Goodness to flow and, through me. And, and, and reject the evil. Hold on to what is good. Good. And, and the only thing that's good is God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let his goodness flow through you every good thing comes from god and he will not withhold any good thing from you so why are people frustrated with god because they're trying to control him right manipulate him rather than coming to the end of themselves and yielding to him see the the really important word here operative word today i believe is yielding to the lord yeah now i have a little chorus can i just okay. uh okay there's a just a little uh, song that I like to sing. In fact, I was singing it uh, today. And it says, I yield myself to the Holy Spirit. I yield myself to the unction of God. I yield myself to the Holy Spirit. I let him be my God. Hallelujah. 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 It's about yielding. The, the, just the, I believe a take-home word from this message today is we need to yield uh, to the Lord. Yield mm -hmm. to his spirit. Mm -hmm. Let the life of Christ come out of us. It will produce fruit. It will produce life. Mm -hmm. It will mm -hmm. change lives. That's right. Goodness empowers people to change their life. They were going one way. They were going away from God. But when they encounter the goodness of God, God. through your life, when, when the people around you encounter the goodness That's of right, God right. through right. your life, it will be a life-changing encounter with God himself. Now, it may be your family. It may be your coworkers. It may be your friends. It may be even strangers that you meet uh, in the grocery store or out 
of when you're uh, out doing your errands and you're shopping and and just people uh, looking upon your your face uh, and and seeing uh, the glory of God, uh, then they're they're changed. Uh, their behavior can change. I want you to be encouraged today. Well, this message is brought forth to encourage you that God wants to give you good, mm -hmm. and, and He does not want to withhold any good, good thing, thing from, from you. you. That's not him. That's not his nature. We need to know him and we need to know his life and nature and, and let all of that flow through us. And, and we will operate in what I call a radical goodness and, and, and a consistent goodness that, that we are good, that we, we know how to refuse the evil and embrace mm, the, the good. good and then we can be at peace you know peace uh, that's something good and it comes mm -hmm. from the holy spirit. spirit the things that god has for you are good walk in those things the things that are coming uh from uh, the world or your enemy or your flesh or the devil any of those enemies then that's going to put you down and push you down that's right and it's going to be negative but the things that come from God will lift you up and will strengthen you, will change your life mm -hmm. and that they will flow through you and that change the lives and the environment Hallelujah. around you. You have that, you have that right and that privilege uh, to follow the Lord and to release the Lord. You know, it's like uh, when the storm came, G Jesus got up and he just mm -hmm. spoke mm -hmm. peace to the storm. Well, you may be mm -hmm. encountering mm -hmm. a, a storm, release Christ in your life and speak peace to your storms mm -hmm. uh, and, and God will bring forth goodness, goodness. to you. Hallelujah. That's, a, that's what he wants to do. He's a good God. Amen. Like Sherry said, he's a good, right, good, good father. Good father. Uh, Hallelujah. Be blessed and encouraged. You know, Brother Fred said, you know, that this was a simple message, but in my spirit, man, it's a very critical and important concept uh, for each one of us as believers uh, that we embrace the goodness of God and that we release the goodness of God uh, in, within ourselves and to others. Uh, that we might be empowered and that we might empower others uh, to have hope and to have joy and to have victory. Uh, you know, there are, there are situations that every individual at one time or the other might be going through that they need that power uh, to overcome. They need, uh, they need something in their life that they can hold on to and the goodness of God is something that we can hold on to. And, and because he is, he is so good to us. And, you know, this, there's uh, something else that, that rose up in me as we uh, discussed this word and, and prayed about it. And, and the, you know, complaining and murmuring uh, and speaking evil over ourselves and over others does not please God. And we will, we will not encounter the goodness of God if that murmuring and complaining is coming forth. And, you know, it says that, you know, when, when uh, Jonah was in the, the belly of the whale, you know, you know, as long as he was uh, disobeying, he was complaining, he didn't want to go. Uh, but when he became thankful and he began to pay his vows of thanksgiving uh, to the Lord, then what did he see? He saw the goodness of God. He, you know, as that repentance came uh, to Jonah, he, he was spit up by the fish and he, he saw and received the goodness of God. 